We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the March 21st, 2019 meeting of the Peoria Planning and Zoning Commission meeting will come to order. Welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. Glad to have you here. We're going to begin with a roll call. Vice Chairman Jay Outluski. Here. Secretary Brian Patterson. Absent. Commissioner Sean Hutchinson. Absent. Commissioner Linda Grice. Here. Commissioner Clay Alsop. Here. Commissioner Joanna Condi. Absent. Uh, Commissioner Jeanette Dunn. Present. All right. Chairman Jeff Nelson and present. I'd like to begin with an opening statement that we begin all meetings with. Commission is composed of Peoria citizens who have been appointed by the City Council to serve on the Commission as a civic responsibility without compensation. Our duty is to study and review planning and zoning issues within the City of Peoria. The Commission hears zoning cases, holds public hearings, or may conduct a study session on a topic. Decisions made by the Commission are forwarded as written recommendations to the City Council who take the final action. All hearings are conducted in accordance with the Rules for Procedures and Robert's Rules of Order. Each case will be called in the order in which it appears on the agenda unless otherwise announced during the meeting. In the interest of maintaining a fair and efficient hearing, the Commission adheres to the following steps. The chair will open the case. The city staff will provide a brief report and recommendation. The applicant is then invited to give a presentation. And any member of the public may provide testimony. Public testimony is limited to three minutes. When we call your name, please come up to the podium and provide your name and address. After all the testimony has been taken, we invite the applicant back up to provide any rebuttal or final statements. The Commission will then discuss the case and make its final decision. Anyone wishing to speak must complete a speaker's request form and hand it to the Commission assistant on my left. When providing testimony, we ask that you please be as brief as possible and avoid repeating statements made by others. Any member of the public may appeal to the City Council the decision of the Commission regarding a conditional use permit. The appeal must be submitted in writing to the Planning and Community Development Department within 15 calendar days of the date of the Commission's decision. All Commission recommendations on public hearing items, including general plan amendments, rezone, zoning code amendments, and special plans move forward to a regular City Council meeting. The City Council will then act on the recommendation of the Commission. The City Council may concur with the decision, modify it, overturn it, or remand it back to the Commission for further consideration. We welcome citizens' comments, and as fellow citizens of Peoria, we thank you in advance for your participation. This is the final call to submit the speaker request forms. If anyone wishes to speak, please fill out a form and provide it to Ms. Ernest at the end of the dais. Our first item tonight will be consent agenda. Consent agenda is for items that are routine in nature or have been previously reviewed by the Commission and will be enacted by one motion. Tonight's consent agenda consists of two items, item 1C, Discussion and possible action to excuse the absences of Vice Chairman Jay Atluski and Commissioner Clay Alsop from the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting held on March 7, 2019. Item 2C, discussion and possible action to approve the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting held on March 7, 2019. Do any commissioners have any questions or comments about any of the consent agenda items tonight? May I have a motion? I'd like to move that we accept the uh, consent agenda as proposed. Thank you. We have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve tonight's consent agenda. Commissioners, please vote. Very good. Consent agenda passes unanimously. Thank you. We're now going to move on to our regular agenda. We have three items before us tonight under the heading of new business. Item 3R is Thunderbird Road Dispensary, a request for a conditional use permit, KCU 19-02. Again, this is a request for a conditional use permit to construct a medical marijuana dispensary located north of the northeast corner of 88th Avenue and Thunderbird Road. Uh, staff, would you please present your report? Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, my name is Chris Hawkins, Planning Director for the City of Peoria. I'm going to be presenting uh, item 3R tonight. This is a request for a conditional use permit. Uh, pertaining to a property located near the Loop 101 and Thunderbird Road. But before I get into the specific proposal, I thought it might be helpful if we review the uh, regulatory landscape as it pertains to medical marijuana. I know it's been a few years since we had our last case. So what was once known as Prop 203 was passed by the Arizona voters in the general election of 2010. Uh, this pro proposition authorized the use, sale, and cultivation of medical marijuana in the state of Arizona. 
So as a point of reference, uh, today 33 states in the District of Columbia have passed some version of a medical marijuana law. Uh, the law designated the Arizona Department of uh, Health Services as the agency responsible for enforcing the Medical Marijuana Act. So that department is responsible for adopting and enforcing all the administrative rules that relate to the uh, act, including registering qualified patients, uh, qualified caregivers, and also they're responsible for the issuance and rules pertaining to dispensary and cultivation certificates. So initially when the, uh, when the rules were established, the number of dispensary certificates were based on the number of pharmacies in the state. So for every 10 licensed pharmacies, one medical marijuana dispensary um, was permitted. So this initially equated to 126 possible dispensary certificates statewide. So to ensure equal access throughout the state, um, the DHS limited the number of certificates or, or registered dispensaries according to geographic areas called community health analysis areas, or we call them CHAWS. But essentially what they are are units of geography throughout the state that the state uses to collect health statistics uh, throughout. Uh, most of urbanized Peoria is uh, located in one CHA. We, it's CHA number 41. I think we happen to have a total of three CHAs that, that consume all of Peoria. So back to the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act. So while it authorized the use, sale, and cultivation of medical marijuana, it also authorized cities the ability to enact reasonable zoning regulations limiting the use of land of registered medical marijuana dispensaries and cultivation facilities. So at that point, I want to underscore the word uh, reasonable because as a proposition that became law, we, we could not have enacted regulations that were so limiting that it had the force and effect prohibiting um, dispensaries and therefore frustrating the intent of the law and the, and the will of the voters. So in 2011, the city uh, adopted an amendment to its zoning ordinance that um, regulated the location and operation of medical marijuana dispensaries and cultivation facilities. So when we looked at the, at the, the issue at that time, uh, given that the nature of uh, dispensaries being a cash-based business, uh, we collaborated with the police department and other departments in the city, and we all determined that the commercial districts would be the most appropriate districts to um, contain uh, medical marijuana dispensaries. So in that, we, had, we identified a number of uh, limitations and separation requirements. So firstly, we required the issuance of a conditional use permit for each dispensary. Um, we, again, we restricted them to certain commercial zones within the city. Um, we required separation from certain types of uses. So if you look at the screen on the right, um, there is minimum separation from all these uses from a medical marijuana dispensary. So they have to show us that they're, a they're in a qualifying uh, spot, that there are at least a minimum of so many feet from those specific uses. There's also another a number of uh, other requirements, including they have to have a security plan that identifies um, how the security procedures are gonna work. They have to have a, for example, a guard has to be there from all, uh, for all operations throughout the, the business day. Uh, the plan is approved by the police department. They have to um, also address various operating requirements that are identified in a code, including how are they gonna dispose of remnants uh, and, and so forth. And then um, with, like with any condition use permit, if the condition use permit is not activated within an 18 month period, then it essentially um, is inactive and, and, would ha and a, a new facility would have to come in and uh, re uh, reauthorize the CUP. So what you see on the screen is that's the first medical marijuana dispensary that was approved in Peoria, and that was approved back in, in 2013, um, and that is at 91st in Peoria, uh, adjacent to the Home Depot at that location. So to date, we have four medical marijuana dispensaries um, in the city. Just to give you a little update on the, uh, the act, uh, in 2016, a new lottery was held through uh, DHS, that resulted in the award of one additional certificate for the Peoria number 41 CHA. So uh, apparently this CHA had one of the highest number of registered um, card holders in the state, so they were awarded another certificate. Uh, so that lottery winner, um, they received a conditions permit and they've been in business since uh, 2017. Um, additionally, it should be noted that uh, the administrative rules um, also permit a licensed medical marijuana dispensary that's in good standing in the state and that's been in operation for at least three years, they have the ability to transfer its certificate to another CHA. So um, in relation to that, we've had two additional dispensaries that have received conditional use permit approval. In, in essence, they've, they've transferred their 
certificate to the Peoria child. So that's why I mentioned we have a total of four today. Um, they are at uh, let's see, 91st in Peoria, 91st in Olive, the southwest corner there, 91st in Northern, something about 91st, right? 91st in Northern, and then we have one up north at uh, 99th Avenue in Beardsley across the street from the Bashers. There's also a, a medical marijuana facility up there. So we've got four currently in the city. So in summary, the um, Department of Health Services, they have purview over the rules and regulations of Medical Marijuana Act. So the administration and enforcement of that, including how the issuance of all uh, cards and the transfer certificates. So they are the, the agency that's behind the administration of the Medical Marijuana Act. The city of Peoria, we have land use and zoning authority. So from a land use perspective, uh, we have the, the requirement for a conditional use permit, and we have a number of, of limitations uh, throughout our code that are enumerated in your, in your uh, packet that uh, talk about all the operational limitations and the siting limitations that we have. But that's the city of Peoria's purview. All right, so now on to the application in front of us. Um, so this is an application filed um, by uh, Lindsay Shuby on behalf of Gamage and Burnham. Um, this is a location that is located at the north and of the northeast corner of 88th Avenue and Thunderbird. You can, it's identified in red on the screen. It's a vacant site currently. It's about uh, a little over one acre in size. So again, this is a request from the uh, facility to, uh, to uh, receive issuance of a condition use permit for a dispensary, another a new dispensary location. More specifically in the context, so again, the site is identified in red. Uh, so we'll start north, we'll go clockwise around. To the north is a parking lot, um, and just to the north of that is a commerce facility with a number of, of retail and, and, uh, and uh, commerce uses there. Uh, to the east of the site is uh, auto body repair, and at the southeast corner is the Dillon's uh, barbecue. Um, to the south of the site is a car wash facility and also another auto repair use. And then to the west, um, uh, some auto repair uses and vacant site. And then to the far southwest is the current quick trip. So area context, this is an established commercial area. It's been zoned uh, commercial since the 70s. Um, there is a, some industrial zoning as well in the area. The site itself is accessed directly from Thunderbird through the car wash site. There is also secondary access from 88th Avenue. 88th Avenue is actually a portion of it is a public road, and then when you get to the site and north of it, that's actually a private road and not maintained by the city. So um, in terms of its context, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about separation and, and adjacent uses, but the nearest residential happens to be approximately 533 feet away from the building, and that would happen to be the apartments um, to the southwest, south side of Thunderbird Road across the, the, that six-lane facility. In terms of the current zoning, the site is zoned uh, Intermediate Commercial, or C2. Uh, the C2 district permits medical marijuana dispensaries with, with a conditional use permit and subject to all the separation and operating requirements. Again, to re reorientate you with the, oper with the separation requirements, those are those operation requirements on the screen. Um, in terms of the, uh, again, some of the operation requirements that I had mentioned, um, the product uh, cannot be accessible from the library, from the lobby rather. So as somebody comes in, they have to demonstrate that they are, uh, they have a card. And then the um, registered uh, caregiver then would take them back in a locked, locked area, which was where they would um, admit, provide the, uh, the product. Um, they also, again, have to have a security management plan and a security guard on site at all times. Uh, the security management plan that we have here has been approved by the police department. Um, there are other operational requirements, including they can't have drive-through, there's no delivery services permitted, of course, no alcohol or, or consumption of medical marijuana product on site. So there's, there's a quite a few, bit, few more. In fact, if you look at your staff report, I think we've identified about 20 operating requirements that they have to meet in addition to the, the separation requirements. So this is the site. Uh, this is the conceptual site plan. So Tonight we're talking about the, the use permit. If the use permit is approved, they still have to go through a site permit process because again, we're talking about a new build, new construction building. So we have to go through design review and, and all the uh, requirements that we would um, have for site plan amendment, site plan approval rather. Um, it is a proposed new building of about 11,350 square feet in size. The proposed hours of operation are from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., which align with the requirements in the zoning ordinance. 
Um, they estimate that they, they might throughout the day have approximately 130 to 195 patients per day um, and about six to 15 dispensary agents um, at any one time on site, uh, plus again, the, the security guard. Um, outdoor seating and loitering is prohibited. And again, as I mentioned, the security plan um, has been approved by the police department. And so a little bit about that security plan, it does require uh, security cameras throughout the site or throughout the building rather. They have to uh, retain all recordings for at least 60 days. Um, business has to be fully alarmed and that is operated by a bona fide security company. And finally, um, as I mentioned about the security guard, they have to be posted at all times and licensed and duly bonded through the, uh, through the state. So in terms of the separation requirements, um, we um, reviewed the proposal. Um, we've um, confirmed that the facility is not within the, uh, is outside of the separation requirements that are, that are outlined in the code. The nearest medical marijuana dispensary is approximately uh, over two miles away, and that's the 91st in Peoria facility. Um, the nearest school is about a half mile away at, at Sweetwater and 87th Avenue. The nearest um, tavern or bar, which would be Legends Bar, is again about a half mile away at 83rd and Thunderbird. And as I mentioned earlier, the nearest residentially zoned property is over 500 feet away, um, the apartments across Thunderbird Road. With all conditional use permits, we have a notification procedure. When we get the application in, we send out what's called a notice of application. We send that to all property owners within a 600 foot radius and all registered HOAs within a one mile radius. Um, we also perform that again when it's time to go to hearing. We, we send it to the same radius, including the, uh, the HOA. We also post the site in accordance with the requirements. So with conditional use permits, the way it works in terms of neighborhood meetings is when we send a notice of application out, if we get any kind of opposition within that first 21-day period, that triggers the requirement for a neighborhood meeting. In this case, uh, we haven't received any phone calls, any emails, or any, any opposition uh, whatsoever, so there was no requirement for a neighborhood meeting. And so, uh, uh, as I indicated, we, we just have not received any, uh, any opposition at all. So the findings in this case, uh, again, this use, it's permitted conditional use in the C2 zoning district. We have confirmed that the proposal complies with all of the special limitations for medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, when operated in, with the recommended conditions, we do not believe the use will uh, be unduly disruptive to other nearby uses, and the applicant has furnished a, a signed Proposition 207 waiver. So with that, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, the uh, recommendation is that we approve case CU 19-02, subject to conditions one through four. And with that, I can take any questions you have. Thank you for your report. Do any commissioners have any questions of Mr. Haggis? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna open up the public hearing. Actually, before I do, I have a quick question. You notified, or you, you mentioned that residents are notified. This is in a commercial area. Are business owners notified as well? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, to be clear, I should, I should have said all property owners within 600 feet. That's okay. who we notify. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. I'm going to open a public hearing. Is the applicant present tonight? You wish to speak? Uh, of course. <laughs> all right. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Ruth Gamage and Burnham to North Central in Phoenix, Arizona. And thank you very much. Um, I did prepare a presentation, but much like I have to remember every time we're in Peoria, we get a very, very thorough staff presentation. And uh, Chris did a really nice job with not only the, the information, but the, I like the pictures and everything. You, you guys, you, you are lucky. Not every jurisdiction has, has a planning staff that's this detailed. So I'll just run through a couple things and then answer any questions you have. Um, but like I said, uh, Chris did such a good job. The request is a CUP. Thunderbird and 88th Avenue. I'm happy I'm not on 91st. There's a theme of 91st. Uh, that's the site. Uh, staff did a nice job of outlining where it is. We're zoned C2, and we're permitted uh, subject to obtaining a CUP. This is the site. Again, it's a new build. It's a really exciting opportunity. I can tell you, I, I'm predominantly a land use lawyer, but have gotten into the regulation and, and the AMMA and working with the Department of Health Services in, in this field. And there have been so many changes in the way these retail operations have worked. Um, the, the improvements in um, security, the improvements in, uh, in, in just in everything. So it's really exciting for, 
for, for a new build to come up because everything can be state of the art. And um, as Chris described, there was a, a security management plan approved by your police department. I think it's also important to note in this industry, because it's regulated by the Department of Health Services, there are at least one inspection a year, sometimes two, where the Department of Health Services comes out it, with multiple inspectors. They look at every camera. They backtrack the tape, you know, to watch not only on your, on your best behavior that day, but to see what you look like when, you know, when the inspectors aren't there. And they make sure that every camera is working, that it's all pointing exactly where it's supposed to be and all those things. So um, it is a very, very safe and secure operation. Um, we are in compliance with separation requirements. And, you know, I, I, Chris, I had a lot of the same slides you did. I feel good about this. We meet this, the CUP approval criteria. Um, we are here with staff support, and we have had no opposition, which is not common for all these. I think it, it, it's a testament to this being a, a good location. Um, we, I stand here respectfully requesting approval and able to answer any questions you have about this specific location or kind of about the AMMA or the Department of Health Services and how this program is rolling out generally. Any commissioners have any questions or comments on the outbreak? Uh, just a quick question. Are you in agreement with all the stipulations and conditions outlined in the staff report? Chairman, great question. Yes, we are in agreement with all the stipulations. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I think that's it. Thank you. Sirens, have you received any speaker request forms for this case? Nope. Okay. Well, well I think we're going to uh, give the commission one more chance. Well, actually, let me close the public hearing. Uh, any further questions or comments from commissioners before we take action on conditional use permit for case CU19-02? Seeing none, may I have a motion? I'll make one. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we move uh, 3R Thunderbird Road Dispensary, the CUP uh, item number CU19-2 uh, for, as for approval at the City Council, uh, including the conditions 1 through 4 in Exhibit 1. Thank you, Vice Chairman Lewski. May I have a second? Second. <clears throat> second. Thank you. Commissioner Alsop, we have a motion and a second on the table uh, to approve a conditional use permit for KCU19-02, subject to the conditions of approval in the staff report. Uh, commissioners, would you please vote? And it passes unanimously. Thank you, Commissioners. All right, we're going to move on to item 4R now. This is Iron Key Studios, a conditional use permit CU19-01. This is a request for a conditional use permit to construct a tattoo studio at 8301 West Washington Street. Staff, please present your report. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Lori Deaver. I'll be presenting the staff report this evening for Iron Key Studios, which is a conditional use permit to operate a tattoo studio within an existing building in Old Town. Uh, the approximate building essentially takes up the majority of the lot, which is 6,500 square feet. So uh, currently, Iron Key Studios is within the building itself, affectionately known as the Hood Building um, within Old Town. Uh, they currently operate an art gallery in here. So the, the, this would be an expansion of the uses that would be within the building. This is in particular for a tattoo studio. Not that long ago, we were before you uh, once again for kind of looking at the Old Town Mixed Use District. What we wanted to do was take an interim step and kind of refresh those land uses uh, to kind of allow uh, and create additional business types within the area. As part of that city-initiated uh, code amendment, we updated the land use matrix and uh, tattoo studio and body piercing was uh, created and allowed within the Old Town Mixed Use uh, subject to obtaining a conditional use permit. So what you see on the screen before you is, is kind of Old Town in general in terms of the mix of zoning districts in here. Primarily it is CCM and CRM. The site in question is CCM core commercial mixed use, which is uh, retail services, um, businesses mixed with residential, cultural, uh, recreational, and entertainment uses. So let me kind of dive down a little bit further. Immediately to the north of the site, you have Asuna Park, uh, which is a 
combination of both PAD and ag um, to the uh, east, you have smaller commercial businesses on the shops. Um, to the south, you have some, let's say, kind of older but uh, gently used buildings uh, that have seen maybe there are better days. We also have, um, to the west, you have uh, the distillery, uh, the blank kind of parking lot area, and then further west you have Edwards Hotel. So we've had kind of conversations in this particular area on and off uh, throughout commission last couple of months. So as I mentioned before, uh, tattoo and body piercing is an allowed use subject to a conditional use permit. Uh, in this particular case, it is, uh, tattoo and body piercing is considered a personal services. Certain personal services have special li limitations and in particular uh, separation requirements. And so typically you would need to meet a minimum 1,000 square feet but, um, between certain types of personal services and I'll kind of run through what that list is in the next uh, slide. But in particular, uh, the case before you has already, uh, excuse me, the use before you has already gone to the Board of Adjustment in particular because of how the site is situated within Old Town and adjacent to a personal um, service, which is Speedy Pond to the north on that picture uh, on, the, on the right there. So at the very top, what you see in the dashed line is Speedy Pond, which is a pawn shop. Typically, the separation requirements would be from property line to property line. On a commercial center, a uh, property line may extend out um, further, cover parking lot, and so forth in a typical area. In Old Town, because the lots are so small, kind of mom and pop areas, the property line is essentially the building for the most part. So there's kind of a difference in where you would be measuring property line and property line. So there has been um, occurrences in the past where the Board of Adjustment has allowed a modest reduction in the separation between those uses when it could be demonstrated that a physical barrier uh, would be, separates those two uses because essentially that minimum separation was created so that we didn't have a clustering effect in here. And so just kind of walking through, I just wanted to kind of highlight some of the items um, for consideration that the, the Board of Adjustment considered. Speedy Pond is essentially uh, in kind of where State Trailer is at. The architecture has been improved. It's more of a, of a modern look, kind of a oriented celebration, if you will, even with kind of the, the clock tower, which has a nod to the railroad. Um, kind of history. Heading south, we have Peoria Avenue, which is a major arterial, where the old Circle K used to be, and um, where Speedy Pond was at one point, is now becoming our future uh, park and ride center. So dead center in the map, you'll see, is kind of a, a larger transit center coming in. As you continue south, we have the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad condition. So you only, um, so you have not only the main line, you also, as you see the um, kind of yellow line dart off, that's a spur condition. So there's additional right of, there's additional room taken up by the line and by the spur that connects into it. So as we continue further south, Grand Avenue, is a major regional transportation corridor. The main focus of that corridor is to get traffic out of this area as quickly as possible and into either downtown Phoenix or all the way up through Las Vegas, if you continue all the way through. So then we get into, as we enter Old Town, this has a completely different feel. You kind of slow down when you enter the area. 83rd in Washington is a gateway area in this particular thing. The architecture in particular is kind of more older, kind of antiquated, kind of reminiscent back to, because this is our original town site, it it's, um, harkens back to that character. The lot sizes are much smaller. We have angled parking. We have tree line areas going on. So there's a different look and feel. So based on all of these considerations, the Board of Adjustment approved uh, the reduction in the separation distance. So let me point out what happened. So they actually are 925, 925 square uh, linear feet from the building to the existing 
property line. If you were to actually measure building to building, like a layman or person would normally do, they met the 1,000 foot separation. So when you're looking at it from that hood building from Iron Key Studio, what you see is Grand Avenue. You can maybe make out the shops, the restaurants in between, and really further away, you're not even halfway to the distance of where Speedy Pond was. So the board factored in all of these considerations and, and granted a reduction in the separation requirements. So we get to special limitations and why we're here this evening. For a conditional use permit um, for the criteria, we have two of those. The first one is vehicle, vehicular access from arterial streets, which can be achieved through uh, Peoria Avenue, Grand Avenue coming off. The other one is the separation from certain types of personal uh, services. So the wide range of personal services that they would have needed the separation from is shown on there. So you have body piercing, uh, non-chartered financial institutions, pawn shop, liquor store, plasma center, um, and, and through there. So I highlighted the pawn shop in blue because they did receive the reduction from the Board of Adjustment to the 925. So based on that, they meet all conditions for the conditional use permit. In terms of noticing, we had two uh, postcards that went out, the notice of application when it came in, notice of hearing. Um, again, residents, and as Chris should have, and I should mention right now, it's actually property owners within 600 foot radius. Uh, so we are consistent tonight. <laughs> In addition, we reached out to all, all homeowner, homeowners association within one mile radius. Uh, we did not receive any feedback either in support or opposition to the request. So additionally, we had a legal ad in the paper like we normally do. The site was posted and again, we received uh, no correspondence uh, from anybody that we've uh, reached out to. So for findings this evening, uh, the proposed use is permitted within the Old Town mixed use subject to receiving a conditional use permit. The proposed use actually uh, meets the special limitations in the zoning ordinance given the variance approval by the Board of Adjustment. And when we, um, we believe that when it's operated in accordance with the recommended conditions of approval this evening that it's not expected to disrupt any nearby uh, uses. And the applicant has signed and notarized a Prop 207. Because of this, we are recommending uh, the Commission approve case CU19-01 subject to the conditions in the staff report. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Deaver, for your report. Do any commissioners have any questions of staff? I guess not, all right, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and open the public hearing now. Is the applicant present? Would you wish to speak? No, okay. Uh, are you in agreement with the conditions uh, and stipulations outlined in the staff report? All right, let the ref record reflect that the applicant said yes. Do, do any commissioners have any questions or uh, comments or questions of the applicant, I should say? No? Okay, perfect. Uh, Mr. Norris, do we have any speaker request forms on this item? No speaker request forms. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing then. Any further questions or comments from commission before we take action on conditional use permit CU19-01? Yes. Oh, excuse me, Vice Chairman Luski. I think for me it's kind of a mixed comment. Um, that's the gateway to what's going to be a revised Old Town. Um, and from my perspective, I'm not sure that would be the, the first thing I'd want to be seen as you're coming into a new area. Um, but I do have to agree that the location, the distance between that's so minute that, you know, to, of a change, I can see why they gave, him a, gave them a variance. So while I guess you know, I would like to have seen that those buildings as you come in being something more of an overall attraction, um, I think I have to agree that it, it looks like a good use for it and I would vote yes. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? All right, hearing none, uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I motion that we 
Approve item four, uh, CU 19 01, subject to conditions. Thank you, Commissioner Alsop. We have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Grace. We have a motion and a second on the table uh, to approve a conditional use permit for KCU 19 01, subject to conditions and approval, subject to the conditions of approval in the staff report. Uh, commissioners, uh, would you please vote? And that passes unanimously. Thank you, Commissioners. We're going to move on to our final item tonight. Item 5R is Lake Pleasant Pavilions, General Plan Amendment GPA 18-08, and Major Pad Amendment 004. I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm going to repeat that. Z04-06A.4. This is a request to amend the General Plan Land Use Map Designation for approximately 1.81 acres from low density residential to community commercial and to obtain a major planned area development amendment for Lake Pleasant Pavilions to increase the overall site area. Lake Pleasant Pavilions is located at the southwest corner of Lake Pleasant Parkway and Happy Valley Road. We'll be taking action on the general plan amendment and the major pad amendment separately, uh, but we'll receive a single staff report on these two items. Uh, staff, would you please present your report? Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, back before you, Lori Deaver, I am presenting this one. The city is actually also the applicant for both of these cases as well, and I'll explain why very shortly. So the location in question, uh, what you see in the solid red line before you um, near Happy Valley Road and Lake Pleasant Parkway is Lake, Ple Lake Pleasant Pavilion Center. In the dashed line, if you will see kind of in the northwest uh, corner, there's a proposed site area. We are looking to expand the PAD to cover this particular area. The request before you this evening in total is approximately 41.82 lake, uh, 82 gross acres. And the reason that we are asking for this request is a result of a number of safety improvements in the area. So the first one uh, for this evening is a general plan amendment that is uh, low density residential to communi uh, community commercial. And I will uh, go through the analysis here shortly. The second one is an expansion solely of the Lake Pleasant Pavilions PAD to Lake Pleasant Pavilions PAD. So it's essentially it's just an expansion of the area, same name. Makes it a little bit easier to remember. So what I want to do for you right now is um, showcase the expansion area in the larger context of the region. And this kind of gets into the number of improvements that are going on. So let's see if I can remember correctly. Um, I'm going to help me out. Uh, the one to the north is Lake Pleasant Town Center. <laughs> and directly and this particular one is Lake Pleasant Pavilions. So if I can direct you to the dash line that is the expansion area, there is an existing light out. There is not direct access to the pavilion center. And so let me, let me kind of dig down a little bit further. So the reason before you this evening is we do have safety uh, considerations along Happy Valley Road. In particular, residents and patrons of the Pavilion Center, which is directly to the south, where you see the kind of the red dash line, their access out of that center to go west towards Vestancia Road is actually what we call a two-stage left turn. And I'll show you a better picture here in a moment. So if you can picture the site, this is the target anchored um, center. What you see right there is called out as break masters. And so um, people trying to make a left, there's a little median break in the middle. That's kind of as the almost safety zone if they, they've got to hit that particular area. So that's the first stop. They have to turn, they have to look, and then they have to go forward to make the uh, left onto Happy Valley. So I want to give you a better perspective in terms of what that looks like from a driving condition. 
So the number of arrows are the number of turning movements at this particular location. It is uh, not the most uh, well-constructed area in terms of safety considerations. So we have a left-hand turn lane if you're heading uh, eastbound on Happy Valley to turn into uh, town center. So that's as you're heading north. At the same time, if you're going Happy Valley and you're heading westbound, you have a left-hand turn lane into the pavilions. So simultaneously, the person who's exiting, trying to exit out of uh, pavilions to head north and west has a very limited pocket of safety. And you have to actually look both directions to make sure that you're not gonna get T-boned in either way. And so after you played Frogger for the first half, you have to continue to play Frogger on the second half to get out to the, to the main Happy Valley point. Um, so I just wanted to turn this over briefly. I'm gonna put them on the spot. Our uh, city traffic engineer is here this evening. Um, and so if he could kind of relay what uh, the capital improvement projects um, are in this particular area. Thank you, Ms. Stever. Chair and commissioners, uh, she truly put me on the spot. <laughs> but um, we've been working on this project, we, the, the engineering department, for, for our design for over a year. We identified this left turn coming out of, I, I refer to it as a target center bus to pavilions, as a problematic left turn with a lot of accidents. And so what we're trying to do as far as the CIP, CIP improvement project would be to close down that left turn and provide the access going to 100th Lane, provide that fourth leg, and allow the folks going in that pavilion center to access a traffic signal to be able to go west uh, to Vistancia. And that's gonna be part of a capital improvement project. Uh, we're looking to go out to bid with that project in the next few weeks, uh, and then award contract in May, start construction in summer, and it'll take about a year to construct it. It's not just these improvements. The capital improvement program uh, for this particular uh, project goes from Loop 303 all the way to Lake Pleasant Parkway, including the bridge over the Agra Fria. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to build a second bridge and connect the two, widen it, provide a protected uh, 10 or 12 foot path on both sides that's protected by a Jersey barrier for bicyclists and pedestrians and that kind of stuff. And there'll be three lanes in each direction on Happy Valley. Uh, there, right now, it chokes down to two lanes in certain areas and it becomes problematic. So again, that project will probably start in the summer, last a year. This is part of that project. Um, so continuing forward, um, what you see on the screen right now with the graphic is a conceptual illustration as to what that driveway into the target, new driveway into the target would be. Uh, with the creation of the driveway, there is a remnant parcel that is created. So what we are looking to do is adjust the general plan category, land, land use category, to um, match up with the existing pavilion center. We are also expanding the zoning uh, boundary to cover the uh, proposed area in question here. That will also allow us to add additional signage in this particular location. The goal is wayfinding at this point, which is to help people recognize and use this particular uh, intersection because it will be signalized rather than using an additional driveway uh, further down the road. So that's kind of the two main components as to why we're in front of you this evening for the general plan and the zoning. So from a general plan perspective, it is low density residential, primarily the area that you um, that is included within that expansion area is actually a city for city right of way, which is why uh, we're kind of here before you. It's, a, it's zoned SR 43. So again, it would um, just be kind of included within the PAD. So same standards and ensures consistency uh, of development regulations, the look and the feel of the existing pavilions uh, center. So we, like any case, we went out, um, we did our notification requirements. So we had a notice of application, notice of hearing postcards, residents, property owners um, within the radius. 
reached out to homeowners associations, uh, legal ad, and so forth. There was a neighborhood meeting held uh, at Sunrise Mountain Library. Two uh, residents did attend. Their concerns were related to see um, if the connection would drive traffic into their site. In reality, we believe that the new uh, in the new right of way improvements would reduce the amount of kind of cut through traffic within their locations, and so um, they were uh, satisfied with the request. So, key findings: um, we believe the minor general plan amendment, the land use category uh, being proposed, is consistent with the existing Lake Ple Pleasant Pavilions area. The center is already designated as community commercial. From the rezoning perspective, the PAD is in conformance with the general plan. The owners of the property have authorized the city to make this application on their behalf. And we believe that this request will be um, resulting in a continuous commercial development that's compatible with the existing area and with the adjacent neighborhoods. So because of that, we have two actions before you this evening for the minor general plan amendment. We are asking for recommending approval to city council to redesignate. I believe the acreage is off. I do apologize. It should be approximately 42 acres from low density uh, residential to community commercial. And the second is uh, to recommend approval to the city council to rezone approximately 42 acres from PAD to PAD subject to conditions in uh, the staff report. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Thank you for your report. Uh, Vice Chair Lusky, you had a question? Yeah, just a, more of a clarification for the capital improvement there. This, thank you, is well needed. <laughs> um, living up in that area and, and going there, I, I tend to go out onto Lake Pleasant, head south, make the U-turn, come back up to Happy Valley. So this will make things a lot easier. Uh, it, if I read that or looked at it right, 101st is not going to have access um, heading north up 101st behind the, the commercial to this, correct? There you go. Aaron Commissioners, we actually explored that early on in the design uh, process and we received feedback from the county residents that, that they weren't interested in that connection, so we did not pursue it. Yeah, I can imagine it would uh, drive a lot of traffic, which would make it easier to get to the south end of the pavilions, but right down their street. And then the, kind of a, just a curious question. Across the street, coming out through Chili's, is that going to be expanded in width to match the other sign? Just for clarification, um, are you alluding to the driveway with the, uh, I believe there's lights and palm trees in it to the north? Yeah, directly to the north mm -hmm. of where this would be at that light. I know coming out, there's almost room for two cars side by side for the right and left, but tends to be kind of a middle of the road car. <laughs> uh, Chair and commissioners, uh, we actually work with the complex. We actually have to remove that median and the palm trees and the street lights in the middle of the median to get the lanes to line up because we're adding an extra movement. We're adding a through movement. And to, 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 get, to have the width and to allow for that through movement, the palm trees and the median had to go. Uh, but we've been coordinating with the property owner or who owns that complex to see if we could uh, replace some of the palm trees or plant them somewhere else. And they're in agreement that this is a good project too. And I think what you'll notice is once the signal connects the two developments, you'll see a lot of through traffic and connectivity between the developments. We saw the same thing when we installed the signal that connected Fry. So this would be on Lake Pleasant Parkway, just north Happy Valley, that connected the Fry's to, is it Home Depot or is it Lowe's? Yeah, Home, Home Depot. Depot. And as a traffic engineer, we weren't expecting a lot of through movements, but we had to readjust the signal timing because there was a lot of through movements, and what it did was create synergies between two, com two commercial complexes that really didn't have it before without that traffic signal. I think you'll see the same thing with this traffic signal. Yeah, this is a very good decision to do. We, um, I know when we moved out here, Lake Pleasant was two lanes, and you were just expanding it. Um, so we've, in 12 years, we've seen quite a bit of growth on that, the four corners. So uh, what was planned and what worked 12 years ago no longer is safe. <laughs> so I'm glad to see we're doing that. Thanks. Commissioner Alsop, you had a question? 
Thank you. Um, the does this yellow boxed out area that represents the 40 acres that city of Peoria will be purchasing and uh, is that all being done through uh, city of Peoria finances is your ADOT funding how's that right away being acquired so mr. chairman um, commissioner also up for point of clarification so the overall center is approximately um, 42 acres the actual new parcel is about one point eight one acres in size and that's just an expansion um, of the PAD area okay this the scale was not working for me that makes a lot more sense <laughs> uh, um, and yeah it's capital improvement so I assume this is all city of Peoria finance then uh, Commissioner Alsop, that is correct, um, that the CIP program uh, is funded uh, through our regular budget process uh, through uh, City Council. It is, let me make sure I get this right, a 10-year program, five-year uh, funded program, I believe. Commi uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, chair and commissioners, uh, it is... Uh, funded through the capital improvement program uh, We did receive we have an IGA with the county because the county has some Land in the area in fact part of this project. We're going to take over the signal at 115th Avenue in Happy Valley uh, Which is a county signal today, but that's been a, a location where a lot of the pure residents Have experienced delays and congestion because it's not connected to any other PR signal. It's a standalone signal So we have no way of progressing it and so once we annex that signal into Peoria, and there's some funding that from the county helping the, the city of Peoria take over and upgrade that signal, uh, Peoria will control all the signals from Lake Pleasant Parkway all the way around, and we, including the new signal we built uh, recently at Vistance and Happy Valley. Uh, but getting back to the capital improvement program, it's 100% uh, funded. There's no federal funding other than we got some funds from the county, I don't know the exact dollar amount, through an IGA because we are taking over a county signal. And this, uh, the, the right of way that's being acquired is currently private or are we purchasing it from a landowner? Is it being done through eminent domain or the city already owns it? Uh, chair and commissioners, it's, yeah, it's existing right away. Some of it's in the county and so we're working with the county to annex that into the city. That's part of the project too. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, I'm gonna open up the public hearing now. Um, do we have any speaker request forms on this one? We don't. Any members of the public that wanna comment on this? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing. For this item, again, as I mentioned, we're going to be taking two separate actions. First, we're going to take action on the general plan amendment, um, GPA 18-08. Um, one last chance. Any further questions, comments before I request a motion? And then may I have a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll do a motion on action number one. The uh, recommend approval of city council uh, to re redesignate the, uh, the acreage. It says 12 acres, but it's... <laughs> from low density uh, to community commercial. And that's uh, case GPA 18-08. Thank you. We have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Grice. We have a motion and a second to recommend approval of GPA 18-08 to the City Council subject to the conditions and stipulations outlined in the staff report. Commissioners, please vote. And that passes unanimously. Thank you, commissioners. Next, we're going to consider the major pad amendment Z04 06A.4. Uh, any further discussion on this item before I request a motion? Seeing none, may I have a motion? I move that the uh, commission recommend approval to the city council. Uh, for case Z04 06A.4. Uh. Great, thank you. We have a motion on the table. May I have a second? Second. 
Thank you. I have a motion and a second to recommend approval of case Z04-06A.4 to the City Council to rezone approximately, what's the correct acreage? 1.81? 1.81 acres from planned area development to a planned area development subject to conditions in Exhibit 1. Commissioners, please vote. And that passes unanimously. Unanimously. Thank you, Commissioners. Next agenda item tonight is call to the public. Are there any comments from the public on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, updates from staff. Does staff have anything to report tonight? Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, so on the screen are the next meetings. Just a note, we're, we're looking to have a special meeting on April 11th, so, so this is, isn't our normal uh, time and place on the calendar, but we're doing that because we have some budget hearings that are going to occupy this, this room in here. So April 11th would be our next Planning and Zoning Commission, and we'll have one meeting next month. Same time. Same time and place. Same time and place. Perfect. Thank you. Um, do any commissioners have any updates or current events to report? All right, seeing no further business, I call this meeting adjourned.